we'll let our distinguished um, panelists provide any key takeaways before we close out here. And uh, Chris, would you like to kick us off since Mark kicked us off with the uh, introductory remarks? You bet, Francis. I mean, I think what we're talking about today, very specifically about the bank failures and things to learn from that is concentration of risk can be very dangerous. Um, if you think about the industry that I've been in for 30 years, the insurance industry is based upon diversification of risk and the law of large numbers and those types of things. And, and these examples that we've talked about today, there were not only concentrations of risk in the investment portfolio, but there were con concentrations of risk uh, in their client profile. And, and those proved to be you know, a very dangerous recipe for uh, where, where these uh, banks have, have landed. So I, I think diversification in, in any of our businesses that we talk about um, is really, really key to take away from this today. And Mark? Now, there was a book uh, written by the, one of the founders of Intel, Andy Grove, uh, called Only the Paranoid Survive, and that was his motto. And I think that's really what we're talking about in terms of boards. Uh, it's easy for you to hear in a board meeting that things are going well and uh, to, illust and to uh, focus on the positives, especially when things are going well. And, uh, and there are a lot of positives. But the, uh, the thought about being paranoid about what can go wrong is really the key to, I think, being a good board member and asking the questions that, um, that get in the way of this thought of how great we're doing as a company. And to me, that's the lesson here uh, for all board members is ask questions, don't, don't drink the Kool-Aid, and uh, think about what it is that can go wrong. I could not echo that more strongly. It's, it's really, as directors, we have to ask questions. It's our responsibility to ask questions. And, um, you know, in terms of the risk profiles, if you, if you don't understand it, if, if, if you're just being said, okay, this is what our profile is and, and we're meeting our risk appetite, ask if, have we looked at this in light of current, the changing dynamics in the current environment? Are there other things we should be considering? Um, how do, does this and this risk and this risk interplay with one another? Um, is the potential of a change in one of these verticals going to impact the other? You know, there are questions that we need to ask and not challenging management for the sake of challenging them, but for the sake of making sure that we're really fulfilling our duties as directors. So those are the things that I would add. I mentioned really the way I examine a lot of these situations, again, are people process and priorities. And I look at these bank failures and it was a failure of the management, it was a failure of regulators, it was a failure of, of directors. They didn't follow the proce processes that they already had in place and they didn't have their priorities in the right place. And so I don't mean to be trivial about it, and, but you usually can kind of look at things in those categories and, and put them there. I think the big takeaway on this one goes right back to this article that we were talking about. And I see in the chat that someone was asking, we'll send this to you, but it's the Wall Street Journal, the surprising risk that turbocharged a $142 billion bank run it was by Ben Cohen, and it was in this morning's um, uh, Wall Street Journal. And we'll send a link to it. And it really is about the risk of the unknown. And that's what we've got to try and stay 10 steps ahead of. And that, as this article says now, is trying, it's a risk of lack of imagination. It's a risk of lack of thinking ahead and trying to think about how all of these external factors can come together 
and have a real impact on your company and the business and its performance. So um, it's going to shake us out of our complacency in thinking that we have everything in, in hand. So those are kind of the key aspects of, I, of some of the implications of these bank failures. And at the speed at which all of our businesses are changing about the dynamics, the external environment is changing. I think that uh, risk of lack of imagination is probably greater than we think it is. Thank you.